I'm 19 Keys. Tap in. All right, what's happening? It's your boy, Louis Bell. It's the Kelly Kickback. You know what I'm saying? No, we really started right now. It's Teddy Ray. We got Teddy Ray in the house. We mentally started right now. We got a special, special guest. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, the one and only 19 Keys, man. Let's get a round of applause, man. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, man, I'm, I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? Because 19 Keys, first of all, I want to get your roses. Man, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? You you I, you know people throw the uh, legend the legend word around too much. Mm -hmm. But to me you a legend. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about to me. Man, I appreciate that a lot for real, for real. Um um I got so much shit I wanna ask you because I'm trying to figure out when, when was the first time we met? Because I feel like a lot of people don't even know uh, of course your co following know you for the town in the very I, I remember. But, I remember, I believe it was uh, outside Fab Shop on 45th, mm -hmm. and at the time, he might have been shooting a music video, no, uh, Marshawn Lynch was shooting something mm -hmm. that day, and then everybody pulled up, you understand me, and I remember mm -hmm. you took a picture of my older brother, and my older brother was like, man, I'm going to take this picture just in case this nigga blow up, uh, that's you understand dope. me, and he was like, that's real, because people don't never do that, you know what I'm talking about, they don't tell you, so that was the first time I actually met you. But like first time we conversed, yeah, that's like five years ago. Yeah, that Six. was that was years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to he do. Yeah, no. that's that's what's up for sure. But the first time we actually conversed is when like I think that time we went out, me, you, Fab. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and, and we went to halftime after that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It was a whole night. You feel me? That yeah. was the first time like we actually really met, man. Yeah, yeah. I got to I got to know you because like from afar, just me, you, and everything. I was just like. You always been this guy, you know what I'm saying? Like 19 keys, you you like people discover you now, but you you been consistently the same person. Yeah. But like when I first met you, like you got to think like you said, we met uh, 45th in North yeah, Oakland, yeah, yeah. and you know went to halftime downtown yeah. Oakland. It's like me, I'm like, bro, this nigga got to be faking, bro. This nigga <laughs> ain't really stumped down with the movement. Like that's how I'm thinking because it's like, man, I don't know. I got to yeah. You know, every time you. Push it hard line for the culture. It's kind of like, yeah, let's see if you really about it. Bro, you yeah. have so many people come and push their line and be full of shit. So yeah. it's like, you know, our trust me love. No, nah, skepticism is healthy. You understand me? Because, like, a person should live by their results and by their consistency at some point in time. Like, and, and here's the thing. A person can be authentic for that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, they can really believe that that's what they want to do and then... You know, they could have, shit, came into money, and then that shit kind of just took them in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Anything could have happened. Like, people be, how people switch jobs, they switch passions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Quick. Yeah. Like, they, they be for the movement at the moment, but not for, you know what I mean, a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. So, like, I just commend you for that because I be trying to be fake pro-black. You feel me? Like, <laughs> I'm I'm pro-black on some, like, you feel me? My mom and dad from North Oak, you know, that's the home of the Black Panthers. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I didn't grew up and went to the uh, It's All Good Bakery. Yeah. So, I be feeling like I'm on my pro-black yeah. shit, but I don't be knowing certain shit. Yeah. And you be coming with your shit. You be factual, like... You know, I'm not pro-black because my mama always had a black Santa Claus and black angels and shit. It's yeah. like, you deeper than that. Well, so see, it's like, what made you get... Black Rudolph? Yeah, you know, like, what made you get... Um, how did you get heavy, heavily educated in that film? What made you be like, man, I'm finna fuck around and be an activist? Well, you know, the way I look at it, like, growing up in Oakland, my parents were the ones who first installed, like, you know... Who I am, self knowledge. You a god. That's where you come from. Growing up in Oakland, we had your Black Muslim Bakery. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And for people who don't know, that institution was essentially like a Black Muslim mafia organization. You understand me? And growing up there, that's why I first seen Black men that had their power, mm -hmm. had influence. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like you pick a, a a random Wednesday or Thursday, and you might see a, a motorcade of Black men coming down the street like it's the president. And they in all black suits, and they stopping in each different hood just to showcase a militant drill. Then they hop back in the car and they gone. Like, wasn't no social media at that time, so that's not like blasted on the internet. Today, people are like, what the hell is this? You know what I'm talking about? But growing up in that, I didn't realize that it was special until later on in life and thinking about, like, damn, my upbringing was different. You understand me? Like, for me, it was normal because that's what I had to do. So, but to answer your question, though, it was really just self education. Like everybody, everybody that I grew up with didn't stick with it. You know what I mean? A lot of most me, most ninety nine point nine percent of everybody fell off. Yeah, you understand yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. So 
and, and it's interesting because I asked myself that question, like, just thinking about the amount of people who don't still stick with it, who don't mm -hmm. still carry that same energy. And oh, what was it that allowed me to be consistent in that? You feel me? But I think when I was younger, I always knew that there was some part of some destiny, like, you know, I'm meant to change the world in some capacity. But not knowing what that come from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Growing up in the streets, you still go do your dirt, but then you know your knowledge. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? But it wasn't until I just made a conscious decision, like, no, what I want to do is impact people the way I've been impacted. Mm -hmm. So that they can have an opportunity to even use discernment in situations. Mm -hmm. Like, when I had a case when I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. we beat that case. But if I didn't have knowledge itself, if I didn't do my study to tell my lawyer the certain things to do, yeah. I probably would have been a statistic like somebody else. Facts. You feel Facts. me? So I'm like, <clears throat> if I didn't have my parents, though, first of all, they helped me form that mindset. So even when I was in the street, I had discernment to know what was right or wrong. Even when I was doing my wrong, I didn't try to justify it with my ignorance. Then I would have never been able to become who I am today. So for the cats that don't have that, like, I want to present that to them. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's dope. Because, um, yeah, my, my dad didn't save me. A lot of times from jail, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like sometimes when you don't got that father figure in your house or a mom that stuff down on you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, my parents to put me in jail before before the law put me in jail. Yeah. So it's like that it, that kept me out of jail. So, um, come you ever had your parents feed you a prison meal? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Stepdaddy fed me a prison meal one time. Like, keep fucking up. This nigga put two pieces of bread and some water, nigga. Yeah. Damn, I ain't never had that. Yeah, no, it wasn't like on no everyday shit. Yeah, Clearly, yeah, by yeah. the way I'm built, nigga. But yeah, yeah, he knew like, his food was one of my weaknesses. Man. He can say clearly because I'm built. The whole mom was like, I just out. Pops ain't never thought about that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Just, hey, you make that decision, you got to live with it. Damn. Yeah. Or something like that. Lucy said he made his kids wear all orange, nigga, and made them sleep out of vent. Oh, mama. Yeah. Cause it be cold in jail. Ain't no AC unit, nigga. You can't nah, change that. Nah, yeah. My dad stripped me from so much shit, boy. I'm like, nigga, I ain't gotta go to jail. Learn my lesson, nigga. But I mean, I grew up knowing that my father was in and out of jail, though. Mm -hmm. And and it, and it's funny that always gave me a certain level of confidence that shit I could beat my case if he be his. Like, yeah. That's the way I thought about it. You yeah. understand me? Like it was in my family already, so it wasn't something that like jail wasn't the thing that put fear in us. You understand me? I think. Them teaching us uh, and, and being Muslims at an early young age, it was like the fear was like in your own mind because it's like, damn, I'm a hypocrite to the shit I say I believe in. Yeah. You understand yeah. me? So it's like you accuse yourself at the end of the night. Like you make yourself feel guilty. Like that shit be hell in your mind. Like they call it uh, straddling the fence when you ain't completely in. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. You kind of in both sides. Yeah. It mess up people's heads when they do that. Yeah, and that's, yeah. and that's what I was kind of like, yeah. that's why I was kind of like watching your career and, and your point of view. Like, okay, like let me see if you're straddling the fence though. Yeah. And you really not. You yeah. really just like, you, you something special because it's like, I feel like most people, um, like, do, first of all, do you consider yourself as an activist? Like, what do you consider yourself nah, as a right, that was going to be what I, I'm Yeah, saying. that's yeah. what I, that's what I meant to say. I don't consider myself to be an activist, but at the same time, an activist is just somebody who moves with people. You know what exactly. I mean? Like, so by definition, some of the work is activist work, but when it comes to, like, what we know as, like, classic activism, nah. Mm -hmm. I consider myself to be a thought leader, <coughs> a, 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 a business revolutionary, you mm -hmm. understand me? And I say that because if you look at what it takes to be an activist, somebody will say, okay, what's the activist costume? I'm going to go I'm gonna go pick it every issue that come up. I'm going to grab a sign. I'm going to be out there marching, protesting. I'm an activist now, mm -hmm. right? But that's like, for me, that ain't the most impactful way. That ain't the most effective way. Yeah. You understand me? That's only step one. Yeah. You feel me? But... What's really the issue? Exactly. Like, you know? step one is making awareness of yeah. the situation. But it's so many steps. Like, now we got to make a change. And yeah. that's one thing I love about uh, what you're doing is you always, you pushing the culture forward with talking about the problem, but the solution. Right. Right? Everybody always, the problem is, the problem is. We know the problem. Yeah. yeah. The problem is too evident. Yeah. We know the problem too well. That's the yeah. issue. We don't know the solution at all. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And then you, you even lead it as a, just showing people just other avenues of um, being an entrepreneur. I, I, I really fuck with how you push a, being an entrepreneur, being a family man. Yeah. Um, because um, I watched one, um, one of your um, interviews and you mentioned heavy that it's important to have a family business. Mm -hmm. And um and I believe in that too because um at the end of the day all the other ethnicities and cultures do it yeah. but yeah. you know but we be so like 
oh, don't fuck with your family and this and that. And, like, literally, I have a family business. Yeah. business. So it's like, I know how important that is because it's not a selfish thing. And that's yeah. what happens, like, in the black community, we be trying, we off itself. We trying to get some money. I'm trying to get some money. I'm trying to get some money. But, all right, what about your nephew? What about your dad? What about, you know, what you going to do to help everybody? Right, you know? Shit, even from the standpoint, if somebody get locked up right now, mm -hmm. they come out, they on probation, parole, whatever it may be, they got to get a job. Mm -hmm. You understand me now? We can't assist that and provide that if we don't have a business. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But yeah. if your bro get out, you got an LLC, you got a solid, legit business, you may be able to hire them. Mm -hmm. You may be able to help the recidivism rate decrease because now he might not go back to jail because you got opportunities for him. But it's like, shit, if we don't even, like, we, it's selfish for us to not even think about that. Like, we talk about the pipeline in prison, but what are we doing to stop it? Right. You feel me? So for me, even, even thinking prison about that was How many ex have you done? Yeah, you're going to be working for five, six cent, you understand me, for somebody else's corporation that, that own you while you locked up. Yeah. So it's like, if we really think about, and, and we really mean the shit that we say, we'll design the solutions in the way that we live. Mm -hmm. So for me... And I remember, like, you know, my brother and different people that I know getting in and out of jail. It's like, damn, I don't have any opportunities for them. You understand me? Now we created something like our BWO, Black World Order. I can literally say, all right, sign up. We're going to teach you the skill sets necessary. You ain't got to work for nobody else. Yeah. Like, we really created that. But that was, like, years of the process of saying that, all right, when bro get out, I can give him some money. Mm -hmm. Then it'd be like, all right, when bro get out, I'm wondering if I can put him on a payroll. Right? Then it comes, okay, when bro get out. I got an organization that's going to teach them the skill sets where they can just do for self. Yeah. They can start their own. So it's been like a, a progression of really thinking about the problem and saying that am I really a solution for all of this shit that I care about? Mm -hmm. You understand me? So it's, it's, it's progressive, but then you got to think like, we, like you said, the activists will be the one who will bring awareness to yeah, the exactly. out of prison. They'll bring awareness to the fact that, you know, it's too many black men getting locked up and incarcerated. The recidivism rate is high. But they're not the one who produced the solutions. Yeah, exactly. That's where we come yeah. in. We and say, then sometimes yeah. it'd be hard for brothers to even hear the point of that because it's like at the end of the day, bro, I gotta get some money. Right. So you talking right. about Short you know uh, us, 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 this and this. But at the end of the day, I gotta go fuck with them to go get this money for right. my family. So you telling people like you know you kind of uh, Simba he addressed it. Uh, he was one of our uh, guests. And um, he said he think we what I don't want to misquote it, but he was like what how many years behind like. 800 uh, or some shit. Like, he, he went yeah. far because he was saying, we just now understand the, the, uh, the yeah, value of certain ownership. Right. Man, you know. So, so the way that that'll go is say, it's a statistic out there that's saying 2053 that black people won't have any wealth. They're going to have 0% wealth. And then they say that brown people, 20 years behind us, and by 2073, they're going to have no wealth. Right? Mm -hmm. Brown and people? Brown people. Spanish? Spanish. Yeah. Mexicans? They ain't getting no money either. They Stop it. They ain't getting money. They ain't getting no it. money like that. Stop now, it. I was behind uh, uh, Pablo at the check cash spot. He said 15 bands back to Mexico. Yeah. Wearing dirty clothes. Yeah. Is. But they got But why do you say that, Chase? Yeah. Because huh? I, I, I know where, uh, yeah, I know where Key's yeah. going to go with it, but why do you say that? Well, I just say that because I see them with cash. I, uh -huh. I, they hustlers but like me. Cash trash, though. You know, you know what I'm talking about? That's the problem. It could be somebody with a million dollars cash right now. And, you ain't and no, it's just that they going to be poor in a few years unless they learn how to put it somewhere where it actually holds value. You understand me? Like cash decreases in value year to year. You understand me? And things cost more. That's inflation year to year. So, Keys, for the people that's at home saying, okay, we're... Uh, me not having... Me having cash, that don't mean nothing. So, where is it supposed to go then? So, you got to get something that has real, what they call intrinsic value, where the value will never go down to zero, right? Things like gold. Gold is what they consider to be a hedge. So, let's mm -hmm. say if the dollar decrease, let's say $1, and it's worth $1 right now. And let's say that this costs $1. So, I can go take this $1 and I can buy water. Mm -hmm. But then this water goes up to $1.50. Now, this dollar don't have the same purchasing power, mm -hmm. right? So, what I want to do is I want to put my dollar, let's say if I put it in gold, and gold went up 50 cents. You understand me? So now the value of my money is the same purchasing power. I can use that same value to go buy that same exact water. Mm -hmm. Right? So what you're supposed to do over time is you're supposed to diversify your portfolio. Right? We hear that, but most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. right. You put some money into land. Right? Mm -hmm. Land, farming, people got to always eat food. That's going to have value whether it's a good economy or a bad economy. Gold, you understand me? That's a natural hedge. It always keeps its value. It's been increasing 
you understand me, over the years, for the last 100 years or so. It's, that's what they consider to be real money. This is paper money. It's a difference. No, so, but for the people that, that's thinking of gold and land, some people don't have enough money to even make that type of purchase. So what do you say for the people that doesn't have that option? Businesses. Of so right now, if, if you got money, you understand me, you want to put it into creating a product. You understand me? A service. Content. Content is even what I consider to be an asset because it can pay you over time and it can become increasingly more valuable over time depending Man. on the type of content you make. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got crypto. You ain't got to have a lot of money to go invest in different cryptos. You can take a thousand dollars and you can spread them across 20 different cryptos and see which one go up by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's like I do understand for the average person that's like, shit, I got to make money next week. I yeah. got to pay bills next month. Mm -hmm. And that's why we created the BWO because it's like, all right, relax. We're going to give you a skill set to start paying you immediately. Mm -hmm. So once you start having money, then you can start thinking long term. Uh -huh. And most of the, the biggest issue is that, yeah, wealth is something you think like long term. Shit that not only just for now, but for like even when you die, that your children are straight. Mm -hmm. So who can think of that when they need to feed their children next week? Mm -hmm. So we teach you skill sets in the market and business and and in and, and a digital world where you can start making money today, tomorrow, the next week. That's going to pay you, you understand me, for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Then you're comfortable enough to where you be like, all right, tell me about that long-term plan. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But for cats that just hold cash, cash is always decreasing in value. You see rappers, they're going to get... Gold chains with all of the diamonds. The diamonds don't hold value. Yeah. Now you can use that for your image so that everybody else believe that you popping, and then you can use that as content to buy. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to it actually being a storehouse of wealth, no, nah, wealth is about maintaining what you have and adding on to it. Mm -hmm. It's preservation of a value. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So those people who hold cash, you get a reason. If you go look, if you watch any news, you gonna see all of the billionaires buying cryptocurrency. At first, they were swearing against this shit, like, that right. shit ain't work, it ain't good, it's gonna yeah. die off. Yeah. Now, but what you didn't understand is at the same time when they was telling you they don't believe in it, they had already yeah. bought something. Yeah. You understand me? They just didn't come out and back it until the dollar went down, it decreased in value. The economy all around the world is crazy right now. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. We're in the, in the midst of the biggest yeah. wealth transfer, and all that means is the rich getting richer, the poor getting poor. Yeah, like somebody somebody put some game in my ear the other day. They were saying like um, about the Bitcoin situation. It's yeah. like you got to invest in it because it's like at the end of the day, it's like like you're saying, the dollar ain't going to mean nothing. Right. And at the end of the day, if you look at it... Um, you have the money in your bank account. Most of the time, a lot of people pay with their car nowadays yeah. anyway. So it's like, you got to think about it. That's just a, that's a number that's all in is. your account that you can put the card in and then it's take, you, you don't have no cash right. on you and I you mean, have money. That's so. the reason scammers scam. Because right. it's all just digits. It ain't real yeah, money. It's it not like money. They, you, t you going and robbing the bank and you taking physical dollars. Yes, they go see that gone. But them digits, that's mm -hmm. something they just play with. Yeah, a dollar is just a transaction. A, a $100 bill is just a transaction. You can make... We making a lot of transactions without the actual dollar, and the so dollar like, like okay. don't actually pay off things in debt, right? So mm -hmm. a dollar is a promissory note, man. It's a promise to pay, right? So the dollar used to be backed by gold, mm -hmm. so it used to be able to take a paper dollar and trade that in for like a real gold ounce. Mm -hmm. But then the president, I believe FDR, um, said that you know he took away the gold standard, so it wasn't backed by anything. And then at one point in time, it was illegal to own gold in America because it was controlled by the Federal Reserve. Uh -huh. So right now, and Donald Trump talked about trying to bring the, the gold standard back and, and people talking about that's a possible way that they can try to fix the dollar because they printed more money last year than at like any other point in time in the history of money. I bet. You understand me? You got Donald it. Trump and got everybody rich. $9 trillion dollar stimulus packages. Like, where is that money coming from? That ain't real money. It's yeah. just digital money. Yeah, they, yeah that's so all If a person like. got a billion dollars, they don't have a physical billion. That that billion is like an idea. You understand me? It's like, this is collateral that you can use, and people will trust you and give you credit, you understand me, for whatever that you want. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's leverage. You understand me? But in reality... When, when you're talking about, you know, getting into the billions, it ain't even physical money that you're talking about. It ain't no physical. More. Yeah, and that's what, when, that's what I started so getting. So Jeff noticing. Bezos can't pile up a billion. In the yeah. Top. No, yeah. where you going to get a billion dollars from? About 14, 15 different banks. No. Nah. If you go to the bank right now and you ask them, I'm, I'm, I want to take out 30000 they will say, we ain't got it on hand. You got to schedule a time to come pick this money up. 
the way that the banks work is they do what they call, it was something that happened in the 1930s called a bank run, right? It was during the Depression. And all the people started to panic, right? That their money went safe in the bank, essentially. They went to run to the bank, try to take their money out. The bank didn't have enough money on hand to give to everybody. You understand me? So they had to do a bank run. Today, with the way they practice it is, they take, you put in $100, they only got to keep 10% of that on hand. The other 90%, they flip it. You mm -hmm. understand me? So at any point in time, if everybody wanted to go grab all of their money right now, they couldn't. You understand me? And that would just make the banking system crash. So we we put up a tweet today, like, hey, everybody pull your money out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That should have fucked the world up. Yeah, for sure. Because it'd be like, where? We, we... They ain't even got enough money in there. But and, and to that point, if everybody paid off all of their debts in the world, all the money would go in the bank. Because the money is just, it's, it's just used for debt. Damn. Yeah, you going far, and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta comprehend this shit, boy. I'm listening like a motherfucker. Because the, the dollar says debt on it. Yeah. It says this is debt. Yeah. So, so look at this, right? The the dollar is only backed by the blood, sweat, and tears of the American people. Everybody that's in America is a, what they consider to be a citizen. America is a corporation, right? When you look at, we live in North America, right? The continent we live in is North America. There's South America and North America. Then inside North America, you got Canada. You got the United States of America, right? Mm -hmm. The United States of America is a corporation. Mm -hmm. That's what it's established as. So it's literally a business, mm -hmm. right? So there's a reason why we not considered North American citizens. We consider citizens of the United States. Mm -hmm. And a citizen of mm -hmm. a corporation is property of that corporation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you got a business, if you own assets and you own property, it adds to the value of that business. Mm -hmm. So when you're born, you get a birth certificate, you mm -hmm. get a social security number. Mm -hmm. All of those is to value, you yeah. understand me, your bond and your value, yeah. right? That over time, you're going to pay so many taxes, you have a certain value, your human capital, as they call it. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So each person that's in the United States, every citizen of the United States is property of the United States that they use to back their money. Mm -hmm. It's not backed by gold, it's backed by you and I. Damn, so why you think they motherfucking kidnapped us? That's why they kidnapped us for the gold? Now, to, and put us on boats and took the gold and all that shit. Like, ain't, ain't it crazy that they didn't took us? You feel me? And then now we're buying back the gold that we originally had. And, and, and the way it worked, really, if, if you think Some about... Some people say they bought us. I don't know. It, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a bunch of different compiled stories if you want to go with it. You understand me? I'm, I'm sure we was betrayed by some of our people sold over here, some people kidnapped. I'm sure there was a, a, a bunch of different things right. that was going on. You feel me? Too much shit. Africa but, but look at black people in America <laughs> specifically, though, right? <laughs> they had, before they came here, I mean, that's a long-ass trip, number one. Do that's I believe that long. they took Months. millions of slaves? No, I don't think that we was all brought over here. Uh -huh. It's a fact in history that a lot of us we was, was here already here. Yeah. If you go look at the Native Americans, they was just black people that was dark. Mm -hmm. You understand? They were just Native Americans. They mean that they was here on the land. Mm -hmm. But to that point, though, before they got over here, they stopped in the Caribbean. They stopped in the different uh -huh. islands. Uh -huh. For you to make it all the way to America, you had to be tough as shit. Damn, really? Oh, my, I never looked at it like that. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Because a so lot of them died on the voyage. Slavery. Yeah, like, nigga. So it, it, it means that... <laughs> yeah, you was chipping no, niggas. It means that they took the strongest ones as the ones who made it out here. Damn, never thought of it like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Is that why Jamaican's so relaxed? <laughs> <laughs> Let me out here, man. Jamaican's, Jamaican's oh, fucked. What's up with the long <laughs> trip? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they, you know, it's just different coastal stops where they was making slaves. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. Like, everybody else's slavery, of course, ended before ours. Ours went the longest. Yeah. You Facts. know what I mean? And nobody came to fight for us. Yeah. And, and we are people that, like, we came over here with our own language, with our own religions, with our own way of life, spirituality, all of that. Mm -hmm. But they had to, like, strip that from us. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, if you a masculine Dude, man. give us power. Yeah, that's the whole point. Like, that's why we still ain't forgot how to twerk. Shine. We just forgot the reasons yeah. why. We forgot the spiritual reasons. We yeah. do it for entertainment. And, and we don't do it for problem. spirituality yeah. no more. Yeah, and, and to get on topic of that, you know what I'm saying? How do you feel about entertainment business and what it does to the culture? Because it's a gift and a curse. And sometimes yeah. it's cursing sure. a lot of people that don't even know they're getting cursed. Yeah. Like, um, one thing I, I love what you're doing too is like, you out here getting money, you out here making a living, you out here pushing the culture forward, and you're not out here rapping. Yeah. You ain't telling no jokes. <laughs> you feel 
remember, like, that shit means something. You feel me? I hate fucking rappers. Like, bro, why everybody? He hates niggas that got a mixtape coming. Everybody want to drop on the Like, all of that. But he loves them. I love, love and hate them. Right. Yeah. But I yeah. understand it because at the end of the day, niggas is rapping because they're trying to get some money, though. Yeah. You feel me? Legally. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. at the end of the day, I respect that. But it's Why a lot of. Rapping for the art, man? These niggas ain't rapping for the art. We ain't going to talk yeah, it's, about it's, that. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I know lawyers that yeah. could have been a fucking lawyer, yeah. but chose to be rappers. I, didn't, I know other people just fucking just waste their whole life chasing a football dream, a basketball dream, a, a, just entertainment. Because at the end of the day, uh, uh, sports and comedy and music, that shit is still entertaining. Right. So at the end of the day, outside of entertainment, we have no, uh, no fucking um, people to inspire us in other ways. Like, but to that's get precisely money. why people want to be entertainers. Mm -hmm. Because those are the people that we value in our society. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's like, if an entertainer do 10% of the things that I do, they go get reward, awards, they go get all kind of love. You understand yeah. me? So if like you somebody that's looking at that, be like, damn, 90% of the time I could be scumbag ass street nigga, you know, talking about my pimping, glorifying my killing, mm -hmm. drug dealing, whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And if I do 10% of some charity work, some philanthropy, some, some activism mm -hmm. for some PR, yeah. the people gonna love me. Yeah. But if I'm 90% of the time I'm on that, you understand me? Yeah. Then the I people don't you. give a fuck. But if I do 10% of the fuck shit that the rapper do, then they on your helmet. Exactly. So the young person like, shit, it's more advantageous for me to be the rapper. Exactly. For me to be the entertainer. And then I can do a little bit of good. Yeah. So it's like, my whole goal is to reverse that though. Like, you know, that's the reason we, you know, me and my brother, we got our gold chains. We got mm -hmm. our flyness. We got our car. And we that's got our why. business. We got, that shit go crazy. Like, we need, you can get we your need message to inspire. Across. Exactly. You know what I mean? The young people need to see something better than the drug dealer as the hierarchy of, of, of flyness in the streets and the hood. You mm -hmm. understand me? The rapper as the go-to mm -hmm. idea of, oh, that's who I want to become. Because the problem is, is that rappers are role models. Yes. They just not good in their role. You understand mm -hmm. me in a positive manner to where these young children are growing up and want to become men. Like mm -hmm. that that's really what it gets down to. Like is the person you looking up to even a really a grown man? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. nine out of ten, you can say he a nigga, a real nigga maybe. Yeah. But is he a man though? Like is he, he a got man? principles, he got values, what's his character? You understand me? And like if, if you, you ain't following a person for that, then saying? we got issues. <laughs> Where your yeah. backbone, but, nigga, where but, you cold at? But see, that's why, that's why Nip was so cold, because you get it. easily, as we say, you ain't got to uh, talk about the dirty glass. You just compare the clean glass next to it. Nipsey mm -hmm. was a clean glass. You understand mm -hmm. me? When you compare it, people stand next to him, and they like, damn, why everybody ain't like Nip? You understand me? How come he teaching people about business, but he's still in his street mode? He grabs his cats that's in the streets, and he teach them, like, no, we go. We gonna debt that, go into yeah. a more peaceful resolution and, and build million dollar businesses. Yeah. Like we gonna pull our family together. Like yeah. he was teaching real principles real to the principles. rap game. Yeah. And Cash was and really stepping street. back and thinking like, damn man, why yeah. I'm, I'm bullshitting right now. Yeah. He was teaching them about cryptocurrency at a time where Cash ain't understand what the hell's crypto. Oh, man, was. right? You understand yeah. me? But he just I wasn't he afraid to step in different lanes. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's a it's a good thing because you, you know it's a it's still a, a another legal gateway to get out the neighborhood or well, make some rapping money. itself ain't bad. Yeah. It's what we glorify in the raps that be bullshit. Exactly. You yeah. Know what I'm but I'm saying even with the whole, it don't even got to be no gun, gun, shoot them down type shit. All these fake ass players and all of this, like niggas is. Good people, like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm yeah. saying, I'm not saying like, <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm saying, like, like bro, by just being a, a good person, like, yeah. Why cool. you just can't be a real nigga though? Yeah, like, bro. like, and I hate to use the terminology real nigga because it's it's so it's so mixed up now. Like you said, yeah, that's why like, it's a man. Like who are you as a man, like, bro? Like, so it's a it's a evolution, right? Mm -hmm. You go from and, and it's in the hood at least. Mm -hmm. Well, you you grow up, you're a young boy. Mm -hmm. The young boy wants to become. Let's say just for this particular, he aspires to be a real nigga, right? Mm -hmm. He aspires to be a gangster, thug, mm -hmm. whatever he is. Have right? hella cash. Shooter, hustler, mm -hmm. right? So he go through that phase when he a teenager trying to find himself. Yes, yeah, so and we you understand me. That. When you become in your 20s, you feel like you know who you are, mm -hmm. right? And then you say, okay, I've, I've solidified my consistency in like fighting for this thing and I found some success. I'm a real nigga now. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But then at the real nigga, like, 
you supposed to build like a family. You supposed to build real morals and then become a man. Yeah. Like being yeah. a real nigga is not above being a real man. Exactly. And that's what people get misconstrued. Tupac said, "Man, I got thug like tatted on my chest," and a, and a, that shit ain't going away. But he said, like at the high school, you still graduate from college, but you keep your diploma. You understand me? Like, you ain't got to get rid of it, but you graduate from it. Yeah, and the things you learn from it, you carry on to the next level to advance. But we, like, we we literally celebrate mm -hmm. our lack of advancement. He say, no, don't change. You understand me? Stay yeah, the same. Yeah. Like, no, like, change is talking about progress. Yeah. Another word for change is evolution. Another word for change is growth. Yeah. But, like, we don't think of those things to be synonymous. We think, like, change is, like, we, 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 we betraying our old self. Yeah, like no, we we adding on to our old self, and that's and that's something that my uh, my parents doing a good job with me on just you know just being like, bro, be okay with changing it yeah. and elevating, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Because it's like, like I'm at a process of right now. It's like my family is fucking retraining you the shit they trained me. Yeah, so it's like yeah, you, you know, gotta go to reprogram. Yeah, but see, having a a platform, my pops once told me when I was. Uh, I was having some frustration. You know, I, I worked a job before I fired them and started my own business. Mm -hmm. well, oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I fired them. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I was like, hold on. Yeah, I got lots of the story. Was I, 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 went on I, I was working for Pops and his business partner. I fired them at one point in time. <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 they had the money right. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. But no, but I say that to this because if you work a job, people always think like you got to quit a job to leave. Nah, because it's a two-way contract. Facts. You understand me? Like they don't quit you if they if they leave you on the spot. Yeah. So no, nah, you ain't quit nothing. You you found a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And I always say that they couldn't afford me no more. When I first started, you could. I had so much experience and value by the time it was ready for me to leave. Like, y'all couldn't afford my time. I went from making six figures a year working at a job thinking that was really the shit. Because, mm -hmm. like, you come from the hood. People tell you, like, no, that's a great opportunity. Don't six figures that's, is the goal. That's yeah, what I'm that's talking about. I remember looking, growing up, being like, yeah. man, I just need yeah. something where I can just get six figures. Yeah. Right. And I'm cool. Bro, and, it, and it felt like that <laughs> when you get it because you make it more than everybody else around you. Right. Yeah. When you run it a little faster than everybody else, like you feel good about yourself, and then you get into the Olympics, and they like, no, I can't yeah. even compete in that guy. And then you got to think about like, like um, where we come from too, because at the end of the day, we literally come from nothing, and it's like six figures for what we was coming out of. I'm saying as a culture, and, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Six that six was the richest nigga in their family. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, like that, that, that coming out of theirs. shit, coming out of. Anyway, I don't want to just say Oakland, but I'm just saying anywhere you know, out of urban is a is a considered a big that's the goal to get a middle class. Yeah, you know I mean, because I came from that and I was making like thirty thousand dollars a a year with the other job, so it was like it was a cool jump, mm -hmm. and that's what I had fought for. But then, you know, just when your mind expands, you can't go back. Yeah, you understand not, me? I mean, yeah. I realized if I can make millions of dollars for them, I know mm -hmm. for a fact I can mm -hmm. do it for myself. Facts. Right. And my story progressed to where. I went from making six figures a year, mm -hmm. later on starting a family business and making six figures in a month, mm -hmm. right? And then after that, later on learning some new skill sets and having a hundred thousand dollar day. And so when I really go back and think about it, like here I'm giving them a whole year for something I can do in a day. So you like it ain't even about the time. It's, it ain't about the money. It's about the time. Yeah. And the value. Dude. Yeah. You feel me? So I I, I can relate to that because it was the same thing with uh, with me when I was working a job. But at the point, at the same point, everybody's promoting about uh, you know being an entrepreneur. Everybody opening business. Yeah. That's great. But at the same time, talk about the importance of having a job and working under uh, a job and, and and getting that money so you could put yourself in a position to become an entrepreneur. Because yeah. people think being entrepreneurs, oh, I'm, I'm my no, time is back. No, yeah. yeah, you can't jump into being an entrepreneur. So, so no, like, that, that's completely important, right? Like. When I had a job, I feel like what I used to do is I was stealing all the information from my job. I was learning how to run a business. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like, I went there and got the experience that I actually needed. Now, when I fired them, you understand me, I took a leap where I actually wasn't prepared. Like, I didn't have, like, savings and things of that nature. I just took a lease downtown Oakland, you understand me, to start the uh, business. And I just took a new lease for a new apartment. I had to pay off my car. So... I didn't have my finances juggled. I didn't have financial intelligence at the time. See, you feel me? That's, so like, I that's know like, like a rose off the concrete thing. Yeah. But <laughs> I also knew, like, it ain't no plan B, though. Like, I'm not going right. back and working for nobody else. I'm mm -hmm. not filling out another application. Mm -hmm. So that's dead. That shit gave so, me a headache. 
Yeah, I mean, I couldn't even like, and you got to think of it like this right now. I said, Target, nigga, it really looked at that application, and I was like, I'm sticking to Carpenter. Yeah. I'm just going hard. I'm just going hard. But, but see, I ain't never went to a job interview and didn't get the job. Because I was smart enough to know I ain't interviewing with no company. I just got to impress this person in front of me. You uh -huh. understand me? Now? Yeah, so you sold yourself. Yeah. So when I'm when you go into a job, you do want to develop a skill set or a hobby on the side. You understand me? Or a business that you work in, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you take the money that you're getting from your job, you understand me? And you invest it into your business. Yes. When your business starts to make enough money where you got six months reserved, where you can pay your rent, you can pay everything for your lifestyle for the next six months. You understand me? So then when you do make that commitment and fire your job, you have something that's supplementing your income. It's exactly. paying for it. See, me, I was the type of person I was scared to fire my job. Yeah. Because I'm like, like, I was the type of person, like, I came into entrepreneurship on some, like, yeah, I got some money saved yeah. up. Because yeah. I've been waiting, like, I'd had, I had the conversation with Mr. Fab at yeah. the Dope Air store yeah. and be like, I, I remember Fab told me I was crazy for it because I told him I was going to quit. He's like, man, you crazy. Because he knew that I had a six figure. That's why I met Fab at, at the job. Oh, uh, okay. So I was like, and what oh, job I was this? Go. At Prada. I was working for Prada. That's I gave dope. him a discount first time I seen him. That's oh, player. Yeah, yeah I'm up. That's yeah, like you're supposed to be. 50% off. Shout out to all the people that be giving yeah. me jugs. Yeah. 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 Ye
What do you think the future going with this, man? Because I ain't gonna lie, I'm losing faith, man. This shit. Nah, like... I think that. <laughs> so it's it's something beautiful that's happening right now. Uh -huh. It just ain't in the media, right? Like. Uh -huh. I can name at least 10, 20 cats out here that got six, seven figure businesses that's teaching wealth education and teaching people how to do it the way they do it. And they mm -hmm. came from the same situation as everybody else. Mm -hmm. right. But it's like an activist to get glorified quicker than a bro came from the hood, started from nothing, started a, bit, a million dollar business. You understand me? They don't want to teach niggas yeah, that you can do it too. They don't want yeah, you to, yeah. they don't want more examples. Yeah. So but, how do people find a gift then? Because do you, do you think everybody has a gift? Yeah, I think everybody got something that they can get a world. I don't think, listen, every, it, here's the thing. People always say entrepreneurship. No, look at this. Her ass is just black, like, hold on. I got another Because gift. she's smart enough to be able to take her money and invest it into something that's going to make her more money. You understand me? But she just got to be able to tap into somebody that can tell her, like, you know, you can trade options, you can trade stocks, you can start this business, you can buy other people's businesses, uh -huh. you can make me do eToro car renting, you can do Airbnb. Like, there's so many different hustles right now, like, the digital space is where you get to make that money, mm -hmm. right? But really, the hustle, the hustles that everybody's doing right now is old. That's the problem. Uh -huh. You understand me? You got nerds with computers Sell that's making a million dollars because they invested in the right crypto coin because they were smart enough to spend the last 20, 30 hours researching this shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, really, when you prioritize your time, you change your reality. It's just that you got a job, you work all this time, mm -hmm. you really don't like the job, mm -hmm. So when you get off, you need to spend time to make you feel like it's all worth it. Yeah. So you will go to the club, you will go to the strip club, you will go to the bar, you will go out with the folks. Mm -hmm. All of that time that you spend is what you're supposed to be time learning and educating yourself so you can get into a new reality. And that's I, I feel like that's one thing that I feel like probably us three all has done. Because yeah. when I was off, I was not off. Like I was I was working and I'd take off my shirt. Yeah. Switch pants, everything, switch my whole clothes and make it look like I was out all motherfucking yeah. day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't no telling. Uh, what, that was six years ago? I don't know my financial shit six years yeah. ago. But nigga, I possibly could have got off work that yeah. day. I don't, no, I don't I know how long I've been good. out free. But I'm saying Did it's I like, have some I didn't like, no days. I don't even know. I don't know. But so I know. Years what what I, year is that? What, what's this year? I know I've been, been doing comedy for a living for seven years. Bro. Yeah. Got to be seven, so. Um, but I'm saying that that first year was like, whoo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? So but you it's know what? Like, it's crazy. It ain't that hard to get it, though, right? Like, yeah. the average person, like my brother, him 500, and uh, the bro bully, they teach credit, right? Uh -huh. So, of course, you do something like credit, you can go take the next five, six months building your credit up, getting you a trade line, going flipping that loan that you get from a trade line and putting it into something that's going to make you some money. But it's like, people don't even put together a six-month plan with the money they got. Yeah. You understand yeah, me? Yeah. And then, we got to read. It's so hard. It's not, though. It's, it's not. So hard. Why do you feel like because it's hard? Because because I'm, well, like I'm just saying, I'm just speaking for the average For person. the average, that's why I really that's what. That's how they feel. Uh -huh. It's so hard to plan out six months when niggas are so day-to-day. -day mm -hmm. But but here's the thing, shit, right? You, know? you go spend, let's say you go take $2,000, average person right now go spend it on bullshit. Right. right? They just don't know what else they can do with it. This yeah. issue, it's like what you ever, whatever you got in your mind, you go produce in reality. You understand me? If you got something different to where you think about, all right, I got ten thousand dollars. This how I'm gonna break this down and spend it. You understand me? Now the way you go do it is based on your habits. Okay, mm -hmm. some going to food, some going to uh, uh, entertainment, some going to shopping. You understand me? Buying my clothes. Some going when I, I go out to the club. Some may go into my business if that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Sometimes I like to throw a bath bomb in the tub. So okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Habit. Smoking. Hygiene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I like All that. of that shit. I like that Gucci Guilty. That shit so cost. That's not That but, shit cost. But, but look at this though, right? I always yeah. say every level of life comes with a new language. Every level of consciousness comes with a new language. Right? Mm -hmm. See, the poor man don't speak the same language as a rich man. You understand me? Mm. See, the rich man, mm. he going to have more options. Well, get, break out the language. Rosetta Stone. You know what I'm talking about? But in real life, right, the average person don't even know what wealth means. They don't know what assets are. They don't even know what liabilities are, right? Mm. And really, I always say 80% mindset, 20% skill set. You got the right mindset, you can master any skill set. You understand man, me? That's so a real game. If, if you focus on getting your mind right for most of the part of the time, Anything you do after that is going to be an accomplishment. You understand me? Success don't start when you start the business. You have to have a successful mindset. Oh, mama. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But we measure success the wrong way in society, right? Mm -hmm. 
So for young cats right now, they think, oh, I ain't successful until I buy this car, I show off this cash, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my Gucci, my Louis, my all successful of that. Today. That ain't success. You were successful because you had the mindset that produced the ability to create those things, to make it. Like, we chase money instead of value, right? But if mm. you chase value, the money chase you. Mm. So I always think about who got my money in their pocket. How do I get it out? I got to create something of value. Money is literally meant to exchange for things of value. If somebody got $100,000, they will easily they take a percentage people. of that, you know what I'm talking about, and give it to you if you got something of value. If I pull out something right now that each yeah. one of y'all want, you going to think about your budget to buy it. Bro, that make a lot of sense. Yeah. That, that make a lot of, because it's like the value, because there's certain things, like I can get in rooms, and I know a lot of people that a lot of rich niggas know, I mean, yeah. that, that can't go and don't know, because at the end of the day, like, to a rich person, Another uh, just a nigga with some money ain't no value to a person that got some money. Yeah. So it's like, like I can add value to the like I'm worth something to people that that got more money than me. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm worth something. I'm bringing some type of value. So it's not now. It ain't about a money thing. It's about the value. But, but look what at saying. what's the most valuable thing. Like even a cat. Like what would make you valuable to a billionaire? You walk in a room. You understand? Even the average cat in the hood is valuable to a billionaire because yeah. you got a perspective he ain't got. Yeah. You understand me? And he can't get. You got a creativity that if he was able to harness that, he could put money behind it. You understand me? And put a system behind it and make millions. Yeah. But the problem is you just don't have the funds to fund your idea. It's not that it's not a good idea. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's plenty of gold in the hood. That's why they Yeah, steal. that's where they go get it That's why they steal it from. Right. We, we often don't get money, go back to the hood and find the gold. You understand me? We yeah. trying to get as far as possible. So those yeah, cats got to go rely on the white man. Got to go rely on the job. Got to go rely on the school because the cats with money don't come back and they don't invest. Yeah. You understand me? Like my whole thing right now, I'm finding a bunch of different like different artists and people that got projects. And like, I want to invest in your business. Yeah. I want to invest in like you. I want to free up your time. You understand yeah. me? So you can focus on your passion. But we don't put money into the geniuses in our community. <laughs> So they don't get the focus on their passion. They got to focus on how do I survive rather than, damn, what do I want to do because it's my dream. Yeah. You understand me? And when I study the standards of wealth between every uh, culture, whether it's the brown, the Asians, like we compete with whites, but really Asians are the ones making all the money right they now. They get cheese. You know what I mean? They got the highest gross in household income in America. Yeah. Not white folks. Now, yeah. white folks, they got these family businesses. Mm -hmm. You understand me? One of the richest family businesses like the they Sam last names. They don't want to win it. Yeah, the last name. We, going crazy. The walk, the Johnson the, the, and Johnson. I thought that those was are all last names. Like we gonna buy people last names I all Johnson day long. Johnson was niggas. Yeah, uh, the whole time. Hell no. Yeah, that's yeah. we were just using baby powder back in the day. That's all. Hell of it. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they gave people cancer, baby. then they start creating vaccines we don't need. Mm. Mm. So you know that's a. You but, don't think we need the vaccines? I know we don't. You understand me? Not from the people we can't trust. If you go out there to Cuba. You understand me now? They have some of the most advanced doctors in, in, in science in Cuba. Mm -hmm. But America won't allow them to bring their vaccines over here. Other countries go into them, and, and they're the ones who are actually um, teaching those countries and advising them on what to do and the protocols. So the issue is the fact that you can't trust it. Uh, my brother Riz Islam, Dr. Wesley, they do really good work on that particular subject, educating the people on all of the different adverse effects. Like Johnson & Johnson literally had, you know what I mean, cases where they was giving people cancer. Right, through the product. And, and so how the fuck all of a sudden they get to make vaccines for the world? That don't make sense to me. We but just we just cancer. automatically what's trust the, them. But what's the what's the difference between the vaccine and the flu shots? Or, what about they making like you got to get this vaccine to go to school? Then what? Because so, that's what they did with the flu shot and all the other shit. Right, so, so I never had a vaccine. Oh, um, we okay. always got religious immunization forms. Now, the problem that's happening right now is the fact that they're trying to get rid of that in certain places. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing my brother Rizzo was fighting for. He'd go to different places. They'd protest and things of that nature, and he'd fight those bills so that people can maintain them rights to say no. Mm -hmm. The problem really is the fact that you really want to have a right to say no, right? Anytime they try to mandate something and force it, that's really the issue. Like, if you want to go take a vaccine, that's on you and your DNA and your future life. Yeah, you might mess yeah. up your swimmers and your future kids, but that's on you. You get to make that decision. Yeah. But also, if you're making a, a non-informed decision where you don't even know mm -hmm. because you just trusting them and not realizing this is an experiment. Mm -hmm. right. Literally, every single one of these vaccines are experimental. Yeah. Like, you don't know what's going to happen to you in the next 5, 10 years from it.
And the main word on a doctor's motherfucking degree, nigga, is practice. Yeah. And you can't sue the people if something happened. Damn. I think it's steady practicing, nigga, every yeah. day on your black ass. Yeah, but the yeah. one thing I, I don't know why I pointed one this thing I, <laughs> One thing I peeped, though, what you said, the key words is you said you ain't had a vaccine or yeah. you ain't had a flu shot and no. all. It's like if you didn't grow up and you got all these motherfucking flu shots and this and that, right. bro, go with the, the people vaccine, with the flu bro. shot is the one who gets sick. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Those mm -hmm. are the people who actually be getting the flu. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Now, the problem is, is like when you study the vaccine and, and any of these vaccines, it's more so about not even just this one. Before this, my brothers and them was fighting against it mm -hmm. because they was creating all these connections and link between autism and things of that nature in mm -hmm. our community. And then also you got what they call zip code wars, right? Like the stuff that we get in our zip code is different than what they get in their zip code. Uh -huh. You understand me? And then you go so back. people getting that loud. Yeah. 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 Us exactly. Yeah. It's, you got the mid vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Red mid vaccine. Yeah. yeah. And you don't Girl, know. Don't take that motherfucking Beverly Hills. Let's go get vaccine. You got somebody like Bill Gates <laughs> that Francisco, say man. he believe in depopulation. <laughs> and then you want him to have a vaccine for the population. That don't make sense. Yeah. What are you talking about Bill Gates? Yeah. He, he believe we, in depopulation? Yeah, he say we overcrowded on the Yeah, planet. yeah, that, I seen that. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? I so, seen that. So you got to think nigga, of that. Nigga, who was you? <laughs> that nigga what else? Get you some bitches, nigga. <laughs> get you some kids, <laughs> man, nigga. Now, they you were know? saying that. They were saying that, uh, uh, what, uh, um, what's cuz name? You just said it. Uh, Bill Gates? Bill Gates, yeah. yeah. I think he was the one that said, um, uh, America couldn't overcome a virus. Like, we protected with the army and all the shit. But if we come, if they start a virus, he was selling that because yeah. it's over. The and virus. then it's like he said that, and then it's like a pandemic happened. So they know, like yeah. this shit is strategic. Yeah. Like, this ain't a coincidence. The, he found the World Health Organization. He over there injecting kids in Africa with all these vaccines, and, and, and we supposed to trust Bill Gates, and he couldn't keep the viruses off his computers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? And Bill Gates always had all of these different lawsuits against him because of his practices in business. He's not like a, he don't have a good reputation in business mm -hmm. already. So all of a sudden he become a world humanitarian and we supposed to believe him because he the richest man. Yeah. But was the richest? He yeah. ain't even the richest man no he ain't more. Got the most well, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so it's like when when you think about that, our communities, we get it the worst every time. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah. Just because we ignorant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we we will accept anybody influence. Yeah. And we can't wait for the white man to tell us the shit is all right and we go go. Yeah. But when crack in the eighties happened and black people was like, man, the CIA bringing this shit. Yeah. And then everybody's like, no, y'all crazy conspiracy theorists. Come to find out, the the, the CIA yeah, director crazy. had to come down and talk to the black community. You understand me? I was watching a documentary on Netflix about it. He in there talking to black folks, and they accusing him like, no, y'all bringing this in the hood. They, we know. We always know. We got an intuition because we've been dealing with them for the last years. Well, I've talked to people that have told me they've seen, back in the 80s, mm -hmm. the police trucks used to drop off trucks full of goods. Yeah. yeah. And just leave it in the hood. That's what they like, doing in Chicago. How you think, brother? All kind of that shit happened in Richmond. Niggas yeah. came off the uh, the train. Yeah. Hella Richmond niggas had hella guns. Yeah. Nigga, I'm like, all the military guns coming in the hood. That's for a reason. I mean, they did all of that to create violence and warfare. And the the that nigga said about boys in the hood. Yeah. You, you, I remember he was telling everybody about just because oh, yeah, he broke it down. He broke it down. Hey, everybody right in the hood, damn near crying. That shit really happened. Yeah. You niggas really live in here. Yeah. It's justification. It it should really happen. But that's it. That nigga talking to specific nigga. Yeah, it's like, nigga, that really happened. <laughs> you talking to your homie now. <laughs> <laughs> you was justified. You got justified. You had his address. <laughs> that's going to be a reality. This nigga got justified. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Nigga, but, but, I ain't but, never going to leave the town. Look, look. Yeah. You are an idiot. <laughs> but remember in the movies, though, the, the problem in those movies is they always made the person who was dropping knowledge saying corny. Yeah, you know exactly. Yeah, and yeah. nobody ever wanted to be the person who's giving the game up. You want to be the person who's giving his life up. You yeah, understand yeah. me? The person that get murdered and, and, and go to jail. He cold. That's he what hard. he wanted to be. He, he was busting that. Yeah, game. he was saucy. He was saucy. Everybody loved he wanted him to be. Oh, he's talking about Lauren Fishburne was the yeah. one who dropped the knowledge. Yeah. He dropped. It. He was looking oh, saucy. Who said they part. wanted to be like Lauren though? From that, from that. Not be like him, but I'm saying people respect him. I can listen. Yeah, but like you respect like an old man in the hood, you ain't really listening to him. I if you listen to him, like that would have became a part of the culture that guy. Right. Yeah, you understand? And hell niggas with their pants pulled up. Right? Yeah, like everybody wanted to be like Mitch or pay the fool, yeah. not fucking yeah, like yeah, Lawrence no, Frisburn. He, he just wanted to yeah, be the ignorant gangster niggas. Nobody wanted to block play with the balls or whatever that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But regardless of how the nigga's life nigga. actually turned out, you still wanted to be them. Yeah, exactly. That's you still the whole part. Damn, that's fucked up. I always thought I'd be going for a Mitch that died on pay the floor. Yeah, all of them just died. But he ended up dying, to jail. I need to be like Ace, nigga. Yeah. Yeah, that's the nigga. I had a terrible yeah. outcome. We I'm still broke, baby. I'm yeah. broke. No, but that's Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch gave me a job. I'm broke, baby. I'm broke, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Ace was like, nah, I don't even sell dope. You know what I'm talking about? Even Frank Lucas, he snitched at the end and got caught up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we ain't got it ain't no good endings in none of these stories. Yeah. And that'd be the same story we live. We in try to be life. them and in real life, it ain't no good ending. Yeah. But that's I what took a big bitch. Yeah. Um, Larry Hoover. Both them niggas in jail. Yeah. I, Rick Ross probably said that because he worked in jail. I don't know. Go back. Go back to it. <laughs> I, I got a personal question because I, I I just feel like you a deep, intelligent brother. So yeah, um I don't know if, uh, if um I'm sure, but do you got any kids or not? Not yet. You don't have any kids. Um what do you think? Um, this nigga's really smart. Yeah, this. What is <laughs> the importance? Like, of, uh, <laughs> that, I'm, I'm the most impressed by that. That's piece. really impressive. You right. see what I'm saying? So it's like, um, how do you feel like that's how important is being a parent? Because I see like a lot of people um, have kids um, and really not thinking of it like a lifetime commitment. I yeah. feel like a lot of people just be like, I want a baby, or shit, I I, I just got a kid. And it's yeah. like, nah, you got a lifetime commitment. Yeah. And I see how. How highly you talk about your um, your family and how you was raised and stuff, and um, do you take that? Is that a that part of a reason why you don't have a kid to a certain uh, extent? Because I'm no, like I just that. I want a wife, not a mom. baby mama. So you know, it's not until I listen. I, I got a lot of nieces and nephews. I grew up, I, you know, when we grew up. So we didn't seen it a million times. I don't want that experience yeah. at all. You know what I'm talking about? And I wouldn't be able to do the work that I do if I got a headache. You know what I mean? On the other side, I won't be able to think clearly, travel, and make the impact. Mm -hmm. So the moment, and, and, and you know, starting a family, that's the ultimate goal. That's yeah. legacy. Yeah. You know right. what I'm talking about? Like, you do everything for not if you ain't got somebody to pass it down to. Exactly. But here's the thing that people and their children, man, it's, and it's, it's sad, just this reality when you think about it, is most people babysit their children, they don't raise them. Yes. The world raise them, and then they babysit them based on the influences of the world. You know what I'm talking that's about? That's deep, bro. That's, that's... Cause the kids come in the house running shit. Yeah, that's basically yeah. what he, what he's saying. Or like 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 you said, like you when you was talking about being a man. Like yeah. my mom and dad really raised me to be a man. Like I done had a lot of hard conversations, a lot grew up tough because right. it's like they wanted me to be a man my whole life, yeah. and now it's like since I'm a man, I appreciate everything they did. Right. But a lot of people then grew up like you know I'm I'm approaching 27 this year, so a lot of people are kind of becoming victims of life. Because life is telling them, you're not making it to the NBA. Yeah. You're not going to be... The, you, right. So life is hitting them hard versus, nigga, I had to drop my tear. No, I wasn't going to the league, nigga, when I was 10. Yeah. The left, nigga, hey, nigga, what you finna do? You ain't to the NBA. Yeah. You bullshit. You ain't got wow. the dreams. Yeah. Wow. Feel me? So it's like, like I feel like that saved my life. Like like you saying, like, um, about the... Basically, you basically saying the streets raising niggas. Yeah, I mean, it's school, like, like... You had a mom, you had a dad, but you wasn't raised. Yeah. And, 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 and either the streets, streets the school, your peers, like yeah. those is really your teachers, right? Yeah. Because you learn from experience. Yeah. So even if you go to school, they give you a curriculum or less. Ain't no experience in that. Like that don't become an emotional attached thing to where it like forms your character. You go into the hallways in between class and the shit you do, those are experiences you go think about. Yeah. That's really your lessons right there. Yeah. Then you get off from school, you understand me, you in the streets or, you know, growing up how we did, you'll get off from school, you in the streets. Mm -hmm. That's where you getting raised. Exactly. Because those are the experiences that form your thinking. So when you get older, that's who you are. Exactly. You go in a household, your parents tell you certain things. Mm -hmm. And those things, if they really hit you deep enough, mm -hmm. you're going to remember them and you're going to think about that forever. And at some point in time, you may actually understand what they were saying. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. But in the, in the moment, you like, man. No, nah, in the moment, like, you, you, just, yeah. you just want to be a child and play. Yeah. You understand me? Like, you don't want the rules. You, you don't understand me? why, to them, life is so serious. My mom yeah. used to hit me with, the, what would you do if I left right now? Yeah, like, and, and, and what, what and like, I'm just trying to go outside. But see, see like our parents taught us the shit that their parents taught us. Like they didn't really teach us the right way a lot of times, mm -hmm. like, because they were just passing things. Even like the whole model <laughs> of go to school, get an education. You understand me? You get a good job. You feel me? And, and live the American dream. That wasn't the right way to teach us. Yeah. When you really think about how much the world was changing, and they didn't update 
those details of what we need to do to be successful. Exactly. You know and that got a lot to do with the school system, too. Oh, absolutely. The school system is crap. So how do you feel about the school system? Because I feel like a lot of people um, glorify, you know, of course, college is great. It's phenomenal. It's a hell of an experience. You learn a college lot of things. Scam too. It's a too. But it's a scam. Talk yeah. about that, because I personally feel like it's a scam. So I mean, think about this, right? If, you know, I go to, if you go to high school, all of the things that here's the beauty of it. Everything that they didn't teach us, we now able to create a business out of. Right? Mm -hmm. They didn't teach uh, credit. They didn't teach stocks. They didn't teach financial intelligence. They didn't teach mindset. They didn't mm -hmm. teach application of the information. Mm -hmm. Right? They didn't teach nothing about wealth. They not even teach self discipline. None of that. Mm -hmm. So now you go on the <laughs> internet. Everybody got a course on all of those things because mm -hmm. we just filling the gaps in where the education system failed. Yeah. So right. if I go to high school, we got a 16-year-old in one of our programs, and he just got funded for $150,000 in one of his uh, stock trading accounts. So basically, he get to trade other people money and make money. You wow. understand me? Now, imagine at 16. if... At 16. And, and this only took him a, a, a couple months. So imagine you being in school. 150 bands of you niggas money? So imagine if you go to school and they teaching you stock and you making money in between classes yeah. from the knowledge they teaching you. How come school can give you a skill set that paid you at the same time? How come you got to go to school to learn multiple subjects for four years, then you go to the bank and you get a loan, you understand me, and then you can go get further education for another four years when you get out. Most of the time, you're not going to get a job in your field sometime. I, or, literally, it ain't everybody even valuable don't enough. got a job in their field. It ain't even valuable enough to pay off the debt of the education you just got. Yeah. And you ain't even got skill sets on how to make money. Yeah. So now, you working for a person that didn't even go to school. Exactly. And then it's like, and then it's like you, you... You confused. You, it's kind of like the people in people college. People be depressed. For they that. really depressed. Like, like the only thing they, they got is the fun. titles. Like, you'd be mad as hell if you went there and you got all these degrees that ain't worth nothing. But you got an MBA. You got a master's. You got all of this. Mm -hmm. And now you got a kind of 19 kids who told you he a dropout, but he just taught you how to make $100,000 a year. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about? So, but that's because... The education system was meant to make people yeah. workers yeah. for the people that are bosses. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't meant to... Like, you don't go to school and they teach you how to create a school. There's no class that say, okay, well, if you want to do this yourself, this is how you do this. Yeah. They never teach that. Yeah. Right? You, yeah. It, they don't ever... It's like your boss don't ever want you to be his neighbor. Yeah, they, tell, they, they tell you to be... They tell you be on time all the time, but be 8 o'clock, you done at 3. You're, you're being trained to... Really be an employee. Yeah. And it's like you, but then they make you feel good with the A and B and, and the and the, the scholar, whatever it's like, Here's the sad thing about that. It's people that got F's and D's and they still got a low self esteem because they think they wasn't smart in school. Bro, you know, you know, I, didn't smart, didn't school. Bro, you know I didn't, you know, I realized I was smart when I became an adult, when yeah. I became an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm like, I'm smart. Yeah. I feel like I had to really tell my family, my personal family, like my mama, my dad, my sisters. Bro, I'm a genius. Yeah. I felt confident. Like, yeah. bro, I'm a yeah. genius. Yeah. But it took me, like, I done damn near cried over yeah. this shit. Like, bro, I really thought I was damn near slow my whole life. Yeah. Because I got a D or F. I think and these motherfuckers that. that got A's and B's is somebody with fucking yeah. life. You, somebody bro. with yeah. their kid because they got a, a, a D or an F. Not thinking about, like, maybe that ain't the way your child learned. Maybe that learning environment mm. is not connected to, like, mm. their, their type of learning. Yeah. So I'm like... No, for real, because a lot of people not really, not like, really. but in real life, our parents, they was ignorant because they, it's the same system. Like, it was a white man that created a grading system and said that they how we operate. They, yeah. they like slaves. And, yeah. yeah, but, like, the education system right now, and, and here's the thing, like, being rebellious in school prepared you for life right now. Yeah. Right, because when you're a child, 90% of children by the age of four, they, they test highly creative. Mm -hmm. By the age of eight and nine, only like 4% of those children still maintain that level of creativity. Mm -hmm. Because society, when you're a child, you're always messing with things. So why we can't do it like this? How we can't do it like this? You understand me? Like, you never accept things for what they are. You think about what they could be. Yeah. Right? 
And so your mind is highly creative with everything. You get some instruction and like, ah, that don't make no sense. Why we got to do this? Why we got to sit in this chair? Why we got to, like, that's what you always do. Yeah, you question it. yeah. Because you got to be programmed to follow the world as it is. And that was my problem growing up. I, I couldn't program. This shit, it wasn't about, it, shit, it wasn't about no money. It wasn't about no grades. It's just like, why the fuck I got to stand in line to go to recess? Right. Like, <laughs> why the fuck? This motherfucker telling me I'm smart. Who the yeah, fuck is him? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? So right. it, it, it's more like if you're not cultivated and trained to be a follower, you damn near not going to succeed in that shit. And see, that's the beauty though, right? Like the child that they told had ADHD and, and, and was the class clown can now be, you know, have a career as a comedian. Yeah. You understand me? And build his own business and have a team and hire the person that went to college because they know how to take orders. Yeah. Right? So... I know, and, and this is my book. In the hallway, they get in trouble. <laughs> that's the difference between they consider a technical thinker. If I tell you to do something, you do it as is. That's just technique. That's all it requires. Mm -hmm. Like if you will follow another comedian and you do as a joke exactly, it requires no creativity, no nothing. Yeah, that was just technique. Yeah. But for you to come up with your own style, that requires creativity. That requires abstract thinking. Yeah. So school don't what teach is? abstract thinking. It teach you to follow instructions. Exactly. So when you get something like social media, mm -hmm. you go use it like everybody else because you're waiting for instructions. Yeah. So, so that's why people like yeah. TikTok because it's like, oh, I got to do this, then it's getting yeah. likes. So let me do this, then. It's like... But then Fuck you got the man. people that <laughs> I mean, we doing. Yeah, we original man. every week. Bro. But then you got the people that run the platform and set the trends. Those are the people that come in there and say, "No, I'm gonna use it how I want to, right. and I'm gonna figure out it even better." Why is everybody doing it this way? Let me do it this way. Yeah. They set the trend, and everybody else follow. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize like you making your child a really great worker or a follower, but you ain't making them a leader and somebody would think for self. Exactly. And it's more dangerous than any other time because. The shit that they learning to do in school, a robot gonna be doing. A robot. So they gonna won't have no shit. valuable skill sets. Yeah, and you gotta think about it. It's like school start from kindergarten to fucking college. Yeah. Like you feel me? So it's like you waste like your whole life. Yeah. It's like you like I had independent study in high school, so I was so bad. Yeah, I remember. Independent study. You feel me? I had independent study, so I was, I was so bad. Where Since they were saying I, I can't even go to school. You feel me? So. That I started that um, tenth grade, so I ain't been to public school since ninth grade. Yeah. So you gotta understand, like that feeling where that twenty-seven year old, that twenty-eight year old, that twenty-six year old that's coming back from college and waking up with like shit. I ain't got shit to do. Like, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Nigga, I was thinking like that, nigga, when I was fifteen. Like, y'all yeah. niggas finna get up and go to school. I gotta figure out what the fuck I'm finna do. Yeah. I, I had to find my gift because. Now I'm not eligible yeah. to go to the league. <laughs> I'm not eligible to get yeah, yeah. I'm none of this shit. So I gotta really yeah. find myself. And it's like, you know, that, that shit really saved my life. So I, I so I, so right now, like what's the what's the best that. way to think, right? So people, you know, they tell you, you know, work hard, right? Mm -hmm. That ain't what it's about. Then people say, Well, work smart. At one point in time, yeah, that was the best formula. Mm -hmm. But the formula changes over the years based on how the world changes, right? Like mm -hmm. if if it's horses, you understand me, and you trying to got down, uh, and, and, and you got workers in a farm, what's the best way for them to be able to make progress? Everybody got to go work hard. Everybody got to put more energy and time in for us to get more yield, for us to get more results. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward, you feel me, and you got uh, uh, cars, and you got the internet, and you got technology, so now... It ain't about working hard. You got to figure out how, the smart way to work. You understand mm -hmm. me? So you ain't got to trade all your time for money no more. Yeah. And then it goes a step further. This is where we at right now. It's, it it's, about, right it's about the creative worker. You <laughs> know what I'm talking about? Because the smart person, they already made the tool. I ain't got to make it no more. I just got to figure out the best way to use it. You understand me? So I can go on my phone creatively thinking somebody done made artificial intelligence, they done made NFTs and crypto, they done made YouTube and Google. Now, if I become super creative and I figure out the most creative way to use this, I can make a million dollars right here in the palm of my hand. Yeah. You understand me? So teaching creativity is the best thing, and that's what I do. I create creative business models. I do organic marketing strategies. I ain't paid more than $1,000 for ads in the last five, six years, but... You know, we can generate a million dollars per month with our businesses. We can generate a million dollars per year or six figures per year with different companies because we creative as hell. Yeah. You understand yeah, me? Yeah. So, like, it's valuable skill sets that each person needs to learn. Like, mm -hmm. you no longer have to be a coder, even though coding is a good thing to learn because people can get paid a lot. Mm -hmm. But by that means that if you got the money, you all you need to do is have the idea. 
The person with the best idea is the most valuable because all they got to do is pay everybody else to execute their idea. Uh-huh. You understand exactly. me? So yeah. now I focus on ideation. I focus on coming up with the vision, right? Mm-hmm. And then we can pay everybody else and use all the tools that the smart people already created yeah. to actually get it done. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I see exactly what you're saying. That got a lot to do with your resources yeah. and uh, your environment because I've seen a lot of people with the most money like, but they surrounded by fools, though. Exactly. Like, when you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? And now you're the most creative person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So, and now you got to think about, like, damn, how can I constantly surround myself with people who add value to it? Yeah. Like, right now, I tell people all the time, I'm always hiring, but you got to figure out what I need you for. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Like, if you can add value to my bottom line, then, of course, come on in, because you're paying for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. if I got to give you all of the instructions... It's, I created another job for myself. Yeah. And, and, I ain't got time for that. And that's how Hollywood run. Like, even with my business. Yeah. It's like, you know, like, motherfuckers be looking for, oh, uh, this person, and we should impress this person. Like, bro, we got to bring some value. Uh, that's so my brother Derek Gray said. They will they reach us, out to us. Need them. Yeah, Listen, even exchange. Behind closed doors, man, I mentor a lot of different celebrities and sports figures and people that just come in and they be needing advice, knowledge, and information. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one thing I learned is I don't actually need nothing from nobody. Like, I'm at my most successful level in life, and I all I still love collaborating with people. Like, I reach out like I'm broke. You understand yeah, me? Yeah. Because it ain't never been about money. It was about the impact it's going to have when we actually unite, the impact it have when we actually pull these things together. Yeah. But I talk to people, and it's like they don't even realize my value. It's like, bro, I probably make more than you. Yeah. You understand me? But you don't even understand that because you don't know how to gauge this because they ain't got platforms for you to be able to measure the importance of people who do for self. Mm-hmm. So it's like I could be around a rapper, entertainer, ball player, billionaire, it don't matter. It's like I got my own value. I don't need y'all. Mm-hmm. The idea of us coming together is going to impact the culture, you know what I mean, in a positive way. So that's mm-hmm. the reason I want to do it. Exactly. You understand me? But when it comes to people adding value, it's like entertainment is still the only source that we look up to. Mm-hmm. You understand me? as what we uh, validate. Yeah. You understand me? It's still, but it's going to change. The game going to change. I was talking about You brother. think it's going to change? And it ain't got no choice because the rapper ain't the most important no more. Because if I teach you how to make money, you understand me? you going to look up to me way harder uh-huh. than you look up to a rapper. Uh-huh. You might be listening to his music while you're looking up to me. Exactly. It ain't going to be the same game, especially if I got the same or more money, especially if I got more character values and things of that nature. Uh-huh. Especially if like, you're talking about like, Malcolm X versus your favorite rapper, right? Yeah. It's a different type of legacy. Yeah, exactly. You understand me? But right now, what you got is you got a lot of Malcolm Xs. You understand me? You got a lot of revolutionaries, and they going to be changing the trajectory of people's families. Like, mm-hmm. you're talking about thousands of entrepreneurs right now that's teaching thousands of other black people how to get money, how to get into business. Mm-hmm. We ain't never had the world in the way that it is right now. So that person is way more valuable than a rapper that just inspired me a little bit. Um, you understand me? That was cool. I said, exactly I want to meet this person because really, when, when look at the metrics for celebrity. Like you got to have influence, you got to have some impact, you got to yeah. be known, yeah. right? Yeah. But when you got somebody else who make content, they impactful, they known, they got money. Mm-hmm. You understand me? What's the difference? What's the difference? Music has a great opportunity because you know people really, really connect to music emotionally, yeah. right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's the content. That's all it's always been about. It's the content that you connect with and the content creators and the influencers behind it. A celebrity is just an influencer that creates exactly. content. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. But now that we get to break this thing down and be like, well, I mean, I got a bigger platform than some of my favorite actors that I used to look up to. Yeah. Favorite facts. rappers I used to listen to. Max. You understand That's me? Fact, yeah. I know that they don't have the creativity, mindset, innovation to be able to produce the type of income I can in any climate. Yeah. They ain't got that. But if they came to me, I'd give them the game. Yeah. So now I realize that I'm more valuable to them than they ever was to me. Because they was only entertainment to me. I got true value. Damn. That's how I kind of feel about the comedy industry. Okay. It's like, you I see what you're doing. You're taking yeah. all my bitches right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, see you, I see what you say. You just came and just said, said oh, stop. Yeah. Quit fucking Lil Ozzy, bro. Yeah. I got it's the like, real game. I see what you're saying, though. Because it's like, nigga, you niggas is just funny comedians. (laughs) (laughs) not inspired by a comedian right now. Like, Like, I I would say most inspired. What's the most important inspiring comedian right now? You can talk to right now. Kevin Hart. Inspiring? 
I'm yes. sorry. N- name, one, name one more. Um, hmm. Inspiring comedian. Yeah, for me one. personally right now? Well, for or in, for, in the grand scale. Well, uh, grand scale and for you. Um, grand scale, Kevin Hart, and probably Dave Chappelle. That's exactly. Yeah, That's but exactly for me, yeah, it would it would be it would be like uh, I'm having I fuck with I fuck with um I was inspired by Kevin Chappelle. Hart and um I fuck with Kevin Hart and right now I would say like ah oh, it's tough it's a lot but no but oh, the no. reason I asked that because all right why are you inspired by Dave Chappelle more mm-hmm. is because of his character. Exactly. Right? And the type of yeah. moves he made. So he yeah. inspired you beyond the comedy. Yeah. Kevin Hart inspires you beyond the comedy. Exactly. You understand me? Yeah. Like him as a businessman, his work ethic, you understand me? What he run his family, the opportunities he created. Yeah. Like beyond the comedy, you still just inspired by Kevin Hart as a person. Exactly. You understand me? Dave Chappelle, the integrity that he showed, mm-hmm. his ability to be able to uh, uh, make Netflix do what he want to. You understand me? Him turning down a fifty million dollar deal to keep his integrity. Mm-hmm. Like you were inspired by that, and he top level with the comedy. Yeah. So it's like he's no longer a comedian. He's a figure. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hart, no man. longer a comedian. He's, he's not a, he's a, a comedian. Boss. He's a boss. So it's like you got to find things outside them little titles, yeah. and you like you got to become a legend, a legend. Tell you when I cried at LOL Studios. Nah. I was hot as a motherfucker. I was a little drunk too, uh-huh. and uh, I just got done doing earthquake shit. And I was just walking around like this nigga really just did comedy, nigga, and bossed up and and took it way past a joke, nigga. Yeah, bro, that shit. I just so started easy. tearing up like this nigga took it way past a joke, nigga. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I think I would have cried. I don't think I would have cried too if I was high. He said <laughs> something a, a long time ago when he was just in motion. He's like. You know, he was just talking about, like, when you hot, you got to stay hot. You can't let it cool down because you never know when the moment is over. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to get your moment and you got to keep just going at it and at it. And it's like, when the fire is lit, you understand me? It's easier to keep the fire lit than it is to relight the fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. my whole thing was, when I first had my fire video, I'm like, no, I'm going to keep this fire lit forever. Yeah. I'm going to always throw something on this fire. Because the problem is, like, people have, they become, like, one-hit wonders with success. Yeah. Like, they start living in these moments. I'm like, that moment was nothing. Like, I'm me. I got a, a billion dollars in me. All y'all Facts. seen was a couple pennies drop out my pocket, and y'all was inspired by it. So watch what y'all see what I do with the rest of this. That's 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 that base shit. shit. That's that base shit, too. Know. What's So what's, so now with that, the... The stimulus package drop in and all that stuff. Yeah. Even aside from that, what would you recommend to an average person, aside from money, how they can increase their value as a person without spending money? But they add a skill. What what would you suggest? That's a good question. That's a good question. The quickest way anybody to add value onto yourself is to learn something new. You understand me? The moment you learn something new, you can do something new. You understand me? So... Google University, YouTube University. You can go to Coursera.com and find free classes. We got free classes at the BWO. You can go to my YouTube, free game. You know what I mean? All day long. We teach people how to learn new skill sets. You understand me? But the mindset, like I said, is the most important. Right? Like, if you really think about your habits, your habits is what affords your lifestyle. Right? So your habits is what created everything around you. The relationship that you in, the money you have, the emotions, how they unstable or they in control, like all of that is built by your habits, what you eat, things you do. Yeah. You understand me? So how do you change your habits? I always say that it don't take 21 days to change your habits. It takes one, the day you start and the day you don't quit, right? Mm-hmm. But what's the reason why most people start something and they quit? It's because they don't have self-control, right? If I was to tell myself, hey, I want to me right now. With yeah, in my hand. but think about it. If you told yourself to right now, if, if you told yourself right now, I'm gonna stop smoking weed. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten, you might pick it up in the next few days, okay. right? Because you don't control yourself, mm-hmm. right? But influence, like in, environment, is stronger than nature. So it's not just about controlling yourself. You gotta have an environment that influences you to control you at the same time, right? Too many people that got bad habits and they don't have people around him, them that help them create better ones. Like we don't check each other no more. Yeah. Like we, we, we accept each other. Everybody too scared for to be called a hater. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm so because shit. yeah, we afraid that people are gonna shut us out of their life. For me, I'm like that person. I don't, I don't really give a damn. Like I'm gonna tell you what it is. You uh-huh. might not like me, but so what? 
later on, when you check yourself, and you're going to be like, damn, bro, I was right. Bro, I was right. And then you're going to respect me for it, right? Yeah. So it's about, when, once you give yourself new information, new knowledge, you know what I mean? It forces you to create different connections on what you need to do now. That person that only knew how to sell drugs at first, yeah. and then they went and got an education, on, and they learned about, you know, these digital assets and digital real estate, you feel me, and ways that they can make money in, in this new world. When they start thinking about making money, they, ain't, they can no longer just go back to drugs. Yeah. Now they got to yeah. go back to this whole list of options. That's that they why they have say birds of a feather flock together. If yeah. That, that shit really real. Yeah. Oh, mamas. Yeah. Yeah, and I but, thought it was the corniest shit ever. Like, I thought it was the corniest shit ever until, like, I, I grew up as a as an individual, as a man, and really, like, be like, well, damn, like, like I done lived my life talking about bitches in basketball and yeah. roasting niggas. You feel yeah. me? And it's like... Like, now my life then changed so much within just time, year by year. It's like, bro, I don't even catch myself. But look, we be afraid to grow too much, though, right? Yeah. Because, like, change is, is tough. It's one of those things It's like, damn, if I stop doing this, am I stop being relatable to the people around me? Man. Yeah. You understand me? So it's like, in, in our culture, maturity and growth is, like, shunned upon. Yeah. You understand me? Because it's like, come on, my nigga, you growing faster than me. Like, I don't recognize you no more. Yeah. And it's like, you're not supposed to. I'm supposed to not recognize you in the same position forever. Like, I'm supposed to come back. If I leave the hood and I come back three years later, you in the same position. Are you even alive at that point? Because life is about motion. Like, you got to continuously move. People always hit me like, kids, you always, you know what I mean, progressing, doing something new. I'm like, bro, that's, that's just normal. Like, a tree grows. You understand me? Yeah. Like, if you come and you see a tree, day one, you planted it, it sprouted, it got to like three feet high. You understand I me? Mean, when you come back three years later, you're not going to be surprised that the tree grew yeah. and it got fruit. Yeah. You understand me? But human beings be like that. You come back, they're in the same exact position. And if they grow just a little bit, uh -huh. we're like, oh, that's what's up. You're doing something. It's like, yeah. no, nah, that's how life goes. I'm supposed to progress. Yeah. So I yeah. feel like success is normal. You understand me? Damn. Like, it ain't fact. special. It's, yeah. it's normal if you live yeah. right. Yeah, so it's like, even to mention how you started the podcast, you say your brother noticed me, and he seen me all over. Yeah. Let me take a picture. Woo. Yeah. He seen me a small flower, and yeah. said, bro, this nigga gonna grow into a big flower, yeah. so let me get this pic now. I already know. You feel me? So, and, But I didn't even see that in myself at that time. Right. That's why I'm like, oh, that's what's up, man. Right. That's, that's, that's dope. But it's a difference it's between like, vision nigga. and sight, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, see, vision come from your imagination. Your, your mind, like sight comes from what you see. Like most mm -hmm. people limit it by what they see around them. Right. So they start thinking these are their options. You understand me? But that ain't the reality. Like I go in my mind, I just start imagining something. That was my options. What's in here, not what's out here. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I was just talking. I was, I, I was just talking yeah. about that the other night. Yeah. Uh, we was, because you know, we in Hollywood. So I'm like, man, we, we game plan. I'm talking to my my boys yeah. and shit. We like, he like, we should do this, we should do that, Hollywood. I said, bro, nigga, we only thinking like that because we're in Hollywood right. right now. People don't give a fuck about Hollywood. I don't give a fuck yeah. about Hollywood. Yeah. Nigga, we out here yeah. for the people. Right. You feel me? But it's like, we only thinking like that because, nigga, we in this little radius. Right. You, you control by what you see. Yeah. And it, and it, so whatever you watch, that's what you think. Yeah. You understand me? It's like, if you go watch a movie right now, you're not thinking about a completely different subject. <laughs> yeah. You're thinking about everything that you absorb and it's giving you information, you're getting feedback, and like that's what you're thinking. Yeah. So if you leave that movie, and let's say now you want to think about your business, and that movie you watch ain't got nothing to do with the business, you're not going to make good decisions. Because yeah. that information, it ain't going to be tailored towards uh, uh, being useful to what you need to make decisions on. Yeah. So like if you literally want to become smarter and improve, you got to surround your mind with information that's useful to your ground. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about? So don't, so he's basically saying don't watch this whole show and leave out this pop. Like, go home or wherever the fuck you going to go and just talk to a dumbass nigga. Like, it's a good ass conversation. <laughs> you got some game. Don't call your partner and say, boy, boy, it's some bitches outside, boy. You get your stimulus check and fuck all yeah. that. Try to find, try to find a, uh, Better value of yourself, man. <laughs> go, go, go! Look up drop shipping. Go on Shopify. Get you a free website. Mm -hmm. Download one of them apps. You understand me? Go in there and do some pre-orders for a campaign. You understand me? Get you some money. Take the pre-order money. Don't spend it. Reinvest in it. You understand me? So therefore, you can start a business with five hundred dollars. You can start a business using OPM other people money. Oh my right? Shout out my nigga you Dom. Can, you can take that same money. Go get hey, you OB. an investment account. 
You think this shit hard, but go get some cryptocurrency accounts, some investment accounts, and put that money in there. Mm -hmm. When the when the when the money goes up, that's when you take it out. The market can only go two ways, up and down. Mm -hmm. A really easy ass strategy for any cryptocurrency is that as it goes up, you sell. When it comes back down, you buy. You take your profits out and then you jump back in. You understand oh, me? Okay. So if you look at like Bitcoin, any of these things, they've been going up and down. Yeah. Anytime they I go up, up yeah, I was going you up, seeing people make money. money. Yeah, you yeah. started losing yeah, too? I started yeah. losing. But, oh, but imagine when it went up, you took your money out. And then when you when it came out, you put the money back in. You would have had you would have bought more. I see. You understand exactly. me? And then yeah. you just compound the interest, you just grow. Yeah. You can look up things like they, it's something that's called stock options. Stock mm -hmm. options is basically where Right now, the stock market is going down. It's red. You understand me? Stocks are bad right now, but you can make money when it goes down. You understand me? So it's called an option. You get a contract, and it allows you to make money as it goes down, and then you can get an option where you can make money as it goes up, right? And there's a way where you can buy stocks at 50% off. That's something that we teach in a, in a class. We they got coupons for stocks? It's a strategy. Yeah, it's a strategy. You know what I'm talking about? My brother be on Wall Street like, yeah. My brother Chris Cole teach you how to do that. How you find undervalued stocks? You know what I'm talking about? And you can get that five hundred percent return on something. Ain't that basically what Wolf of Wall Street was about? The niggas was flipping niggas money off penny stocks. Scamming and shit. They were scamming. Yeah, they was scamming. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, uh, that ain't we good. gotta stop scamming, y'all. Yeah. We ain't scamming. I was just but, thinking. But, I'm but, look, shit. All of that shit is just digits. It's like a lot of scammers be intelligent as hell. Yeah, they, they smart. The yeah, they real smart. Yeah. It's, a, it's like it's super you gotta procedural have hard to scam work. Too. You gotta learn the processes. You gotta read all of that. The scammers be the nerds mm -hmm. that get in the money. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah, facts. And now the scammers are the ones that's in cryptocurrency and getting paid. Mm -hmm. They just not over talking about it to the culture because the culture don't find that shit interesting. Yeah. So the problem with our our culture is that the things that we know how that smart, intelligent, get money, mm -hmm. we don't even talk to other people about it because we don't value it. That ain't what's gonna make us popular or cool or or, or, or get us some women. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So yeah. we're not about to put that out there. I'm about to talk about the bullshit so I look cool. Some strippers out there. So the people that tap in. Yeah, mama. Strippers are smart as hell too. Yeah, strippers you have are a conversation smart. with strippers out here really getting. Yeah. They observe the most. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. They know men a lot. Yeah. They be smart. They be reading. They be having all these other different plans. Strippers be intelligent. And then when you take the culture of the strippers, the scammers, the drug dealers. Like, my brother Chris Cole taught himself how to trade. He learned when he was in prison. Mm -hmm. You understand me? My brother Wall Street Trapper, he learned when he was locked up in prison. Mm -hmm. Came out, and they making seven figures in a trading game. Mm -hmm. And they was both selling drugs and doing things of that nature in a criminal element before that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, my brother uh, Derek Grace, tattoos all over his face. Yeah, you he understand me? Done. Shout out Derek Grace. He figured yeah. out a way to get it done, regardless of how people think of him. But he created a whole new archetype, like, bro, y'all looking up to people that you really don't want to be like. Yeah. Number one, you don't want their contracts. You don't want the things they got to do. You don't want their depression, their stress, their anxiety. Yeah. People glorify They don't even look old. Right. Yeah. It's like, man, that's they be, they be messed up, but society yeah. tells you, no, accept people as they are. No. Yeah. Well, I accept that. people as they can Get your be. shit together, nigga. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> I'm be off down with syrup and pills when you with me. And, nigga. We and, got shit to do, nigga. And we need I don't to be believe in that, like, tools. A Run feminine a version of man shit. I don't, I don't rock with that. Like, a lot of them be suckers, and they not good role model for your children to ever look <laughs> up to. Like, you ain't about to be around. You ain't about to be influencing my kid to put a dress on and, and wear wear a purse. You know what I mean? Talking about I got money, so that makes me cool. Yeah. A sucker with money is still a sucker. Nigga, still yeah. a bitch. <laughs> Nigga, still a bitch. Church. Nigga, drop your nuts, man. Do something for your last name. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? So, man... 19 keys, man. I appreciate you for stopping yeah, by and giving us some game, man. man. I'm ready to go drop a hundred thousand in motherfucking stocks or something right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm you know yeah. what I'm so, uh, make sure y'all subscribe, man. Tap into the Kelly Kickback, man. And uh, before you dip out, man, you want to shout out your social media, anything? Yeah, like, uh, uh, 19 keys, man. It's 19 keys. It's 19 KEYS on all platforms. We got the BWO. That's me and my brother, Jake Taylor Jacobs, Ben X, Derek Grace, Chris Cole. Uh, and myself, and we decided to form together instead of having individual businesses, and we formed the biggest wealth education platform in America and by the end of the year in the world. You understand me? We got people firing their jobs, learning new skill sets, making six figures. Fire you can come in there instantly. Cool. 
and you go learn something new on day one. And we got people from all around the world tapping in, and that could be you as well if you want to do for self. You tired of your job patting you and your, your, your boss patting you on your shoulder. You understand me telling you a joke that you ain't really want to hear and you got a fake laugh about? Come tap into the BW. Yeah. Yeah. You tired of waiting on the stimulus check from Joe Biden? You understand me? <laughs> For a quick little $1,400 <laughs> a week to be teaching people how to make tap that in a quick little week. Come tap in with us. You understand me? I'm talking about you, 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 you tired of waiting on a white man to do something for you? You understand me? Black women, I know you tired of them suckers that you got to deal with. When you get your own, you can yeah. wait till you get somebody that's actually real. You know what yeah, I'm talking about? Talking about you tired of your man sleeping on your couch, grabbing your keys to the car. You understand me? Coming back smelling like weed and you know he can't afford it. You know what I'm talking about? Can't you want him to get into a better process than just putting together his mixtape? Tap in with the BWO. Tap in. We'll get him educated, smart, give him the principles and traits he need to to become a man so he can be the type of man that you actually need. That's God like, damn it, me. It's man, a black man. world order, man. Yeah, I'm man. Out. That's what it is, man. So, and if you're tired of fake laughing, God damn it, me. Yeah. Don't check in. Tap in with Sonny Go, Bob, go, man. go. Don't check in, man. So, tap some, in. Some good talk about. real town business type activity. Yeah, you know man. Tap in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to be coming back bringing the Young OG show live. You know what I'm saying? Me and Teddy Ray. You know man, what I'm saying? The best day, holler at your boy from West LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hey, okay. Hey, okay. Hey, okay. And if you want a better day, day, come tap in on a nigga for the best. But I love everything you doing, man. man. You inspire me, man. I wish I could be a nigga like you with this shit, man. man look, man. Look, I ain't man. wanna if I if I do what I do now, we ain't been a comedian, nigga. I'm 19 keys. Tap in.